Welcome to episode number three of season number three of the Gospel of the Games podcast. Today, we're going to bust up some memes. How about that? Let's get after it. Hello. And thank you for joining me for the Gospel Letter Against Podcast. I'm your host, Richard Storman Norman, here to tell you everything I know and some things I highly suspect. Today we're going to do another installment of Meme Busters. I believe we did this last season, at least once. I know we've done it one time, perhaps. Uh, but I know we, uh, we did it once before. I don't remember when it was. Uh, but we're going to do it again today. And this is when I take a meme that has bad Bible in it. Or bad doctrine, bad theology, whatever you want to say. And we're going to pick it apart. And show why it's a whole bunch of nonsense. And Because people like to put these things out there. And other people see them and they're like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, no. That's not, that's not biblical. That's not Bible. Read the Bible. Learn what it means. Uh, so we're going to do that. And we also are going to go over a story maybe you've heard about a pastor in California that was forced to resign his church because he put Bible truth on the sign. So we'll get into that a little bit later. First of all, how are y'all doing? How y'all doing? How you doing? Still still some, uh, the weather still ain't where I want it in Florida. We did get up to 66 today. That's much better than the last couple of days. And apparently it's going to be warmer tomorrow. It may be Saturday, but then Sunday I guess it's going back down to freezing. I know people up north got it worse than I do, but I'm a native Floridian, man. Anything under 65 is cold to me. So, I don't like it. I can't wait for spring to come. Uh, got a lot going on this week. I don't even know how I'm able to get this podcast. This is my second attempt at recording it because the dang computer froze up last time. And I've been having microphone issues, but we're going to get it done. All I am thinking about moving the day that I post the podcast to Monday, but I haven't made up my mind yet, but I'm, I'm leaning toward that because Monday is a much better day to do it. Uh... The website is progressing along. I wouldn't say maybe I don't know. I hate to say halfway done, but somewhere in the in the vicinity of halfway done is where we're at. There, almost finished with the home page. There's a couple of things to take care of. There's a support page. I just finished that up for the most part, and I got to do the about page. And then there's going to be a page where you can find uh, everything every all all the places where we are you can find that so i don't get enough time to work on it like i want but when i get a chance every now and then so it's going to be a while before it gets done because i just don't have time to work on it uh gotta preach i'm preaching this week love preaching uh so i've been going through the bible and i got some things i want to preach about i just trying to see how i want to go about it you know what I'm saying? So, we've been working on that, and then I'm going to teach Sunday school again this Sunday. So, I'm going to have to work. I'm going to have to get up early Saturday, man. I hate getting up early. And maybe early to me would be like 9 on Saturday. <laughs> 9 or 10. I might need to get up a little earlier to get some of this stuff finished. Uh, but then, squeezing in schoolwork at some point in there. Oh, think about these things before you get in the ministry. Uh, so let's do something a little bit different today before we begin. Uh, who wants a sticker? You want a sticker? Here's what a sticker is like. Got the Gospel Letter Gimmicks logo on them. I was just sitting here looking at them a minute ago thinking I need to give some of these things away. So, here's what we're going to do. If you're listening to the podcast today, or watching it on YouTube, whichever way you're doing it, and you want a sticker, go to the Facebook page, which would be facebook.com slash gospel over gimmicks, 
and and comment on the post that has this podcast in it, this episode, which is episode three. It can be the video or the or the speaker audio. You can, either one you want to comment on, just comment. You can leave. You can comment something. You can leave a gif. You can put an emoji on there. Whatever. Just comment something. And then Sunday I'm gonna pick somebody at random. I'll pick one of y'all that commented at random and send you a sticker. That way you get a free sticker and I kind of get an idea of who is actually listening to the podcast. I think some people just like to be nice and tell me they're listening, but they really ain't, <laughs> which is fine, whatever. People got schedules, you know. Uh, so that's, if you want to win a sticker, just do that. And now we're going to get into the main top. Well, not the main topic. Since we got two topics today, they're kind of both main topics. But let's get into the first topic. Meme Busters. So before we begin, uh, if you're watching the video, I'm going to put the meme up on the screen so you can read it. It'll be up there for like 10 seconds or so. So if you don't think you can read it in 10 seconds and just pause it and then you can read it and then continue along. And if you are listening to the audio portion, once I post the podcast and get it up, I'll go to Facebook and I'll post this meme. Uh, so if you're listening to the podcast, you can go to Facebook and uh, find the meme on there in case you want. I'm going to read it here in a minute. I'm going to read the whole thing. But if you want to see it for yourself. You can go over to the Facebook page and I'll have it posted up there after I get this podcast up. So, let me get the meme. Where is it? Let me read the meme. Hopefully my computer don't freeze up again like it did last time. I got the little spinny thing. I don't like that. Stop doing the little spinny thing. Thank you. Alright. The meme says... Now, if you are not uh, familiar with American politics, the color blue represents the Democrat Party. Uh, the color red represents the Republican Party. So this meme says, I'm a Christian who will vote blue in November... Because I believe refugees and immigrants should be fully welcomed. All people deserve access to affordable health care. Women should have autonomy over their own bodies. Every race and gender and orientation deserves respect. Mass incarceration and the death penalty are not pro-life. The planet and atmosphere are our responsibility to care for. All faith traditions are equally beautiful and valid. Poverty and hunger are unacceptable. God is not a white Republican man. My faith compels me to vote blue. Let me grab my Bible real quick. All right, we're going to go old school today with the uh, local church 115 here. Might start taking this to work with me again. Uh, but anyway, so what we're going to do, we're going to go through this meme line by line. And we'll talk about how it's right and wrong at the same time. The first thing it said... Refugees and immigrants should be fully welcomed. Well, somewhat, kind of. Uh, Colossians 4 5. So you got to keep in mind that when you see a meme like this, what they say ain't really what they mean. Uh,. Refugees and immigrants should be fully welcomed. They're talking about illegal immigrants. They're talking about, you know, just open the door and let everybody in. Colossians 4 5 says, Walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. Now, you, many times that verse is used as those without Christ, people who are without Christ. And, you know, I'm not saying that's the wrong context for it. I've used it in that context as well. But that word without literally means outside. Those that are outside. So it could be used in this context as well. 
almost all countries have guidelines for accepting outsiders into their country. Otherwise, you know, you could get some weird disease. Ebola could come in here if we didn't have these standards we follow. Crime, people, criminals from other countries trying to escape to us. And then they're just going to come here and commit crime and terrorists. And so I'm not against refugees and immigrants coming here. I just want to make sure we know who they are before they get here. And I don't think that's unbiblical at all. You know, it says walk in wisdom. It's be wise about what you're doing don't just be oh everybody come in now hang on let's see who's coming in here first because if there's like a serial killer in another country and he comes over here claiming oh refugee status uh let's look into it a little bit or before we let immigrants come over let's look and see what they did in their own country to make sure that we're not you know got some reprobate come up in here that, who's just coming to commit crimes you know i don't think that's unbiblical at all pretty wise in my opinion if you care about the people inside your house you don't just let whoever in you know that's why you answer the door and be like yes who are you because i'm not letting just anybody in number two all people deserve access to affordable health care real quick I'm going to still hit on this one real quick and we'll move along. Healthcare is not a right under the U.S. Constitution. You do not have a right to somebody else's labor. Uh, that would be considered slavery. Uh, uh, government is never, ever, ever going to provide affordable health care. You can go to other countries where you're like, oh, their health care is free. Their health care is not free. Their health care is not free. You got to think of government like this. You got a fountain in a pond. You ever seen one of them fountains in a pond? All that fountain does is suck water up out of the pond and shoot it up in there, spray it up in the air so that you see the fountain thing, you know. And uh, that pond, that that fountain in that pond doesn't have water pipes going toward to it to provide water all it can do is suck water out of the pond and basically put it back in the pond that's basically what government does government all they can do is take our money and give it back to us that's kind of the whole point of it so therefore they can't provide affordable health care the only thing that can do that is a free market so sorry about that but that's the truth. And it's also not their job to meddle in things like that. The U.S. Constitution tells the government these are the things you're supposed to do. But yet they do all kind of other things that they ain't supposed to do. But that's number two. Number three, I don't, I don't think it takes a rocket scientist to figure out what number three is about. Women should have autonomy over their own bodies talking about abortion here obviously they always talk about women have the right to choose you don't have the right to choose and murder someone you ever notice how abortion supporters which is basically the left I'm not trying to make this into a political thing but this is a little bit of a political thing but you know you can't divorce politics from religion they kind of go together in some aspects but whenever someone who's like a, a supporter of abortion a liberal whatever you want to call them leftist progressive when it's a baby they want they call it a baby but when they're talking about abortion it's just a fetus you know well, which one is it when you want it that you call it a baby but when you don't want it it's just called a fetus but anyway uh Jeremiah 1 5, I'm sure you know this one. Everybody uses this one all the time. Jeremiah 1 5, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Now you think it says there, and it says this in a couple other spots as well. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest out of the womb, I sanctified thee. 
You don't think God that applies to everybody? You can't really say that just applies to Jeremiah. That's that's God we're talking about. That applies to everybody. He knows you before you're even born. He formed you in the belly. Uh, Isaiah 44. Isaiah 44, 24. Thus saith the Lord thy Redeemer, and he that formed thee from the womb. I am the Lord that maketh all things, that stretches forth the heavens, alone that spreadeth abroad the earth by myself. So don't tell me that God isn't interested in you until you come out of the womb. He's very much interested in babies. And that's just one example. There are several other verses I came across when I was studying. I'm not going to go over all of them. But you can just do a search. Several times the Bible talks about the Lord forming us in the womb. So I just don't understand how you can be a Christian like this meme says and somehow justify murdering an innocent human being. I just I don't get it. Don't get it. Maybe maybe you don't have Jesus. Uh four Every race and gender and orientation deserves respect. Now again, on the surface I have to totally agree with this. Yes, you should respect everyone, especially you know, you know how I feel about racism. Racism is just dumb. You shouldn't disrespect somebody because of the color of their skin. You shouldn't disrespect somebody because of they're a woman or a man. Uh, and then as far as orientation goes, if people want to be gay and they want to live in sin, that's their, you know, it's their life. I can't stop them. But I'll tell you what I can do. I can call them out for being in a sinful relationship living a sinful lifestyle and that's what it means there when it says deserve respect they're saying because i bet in their mind calling out a homosexual lifestyle as a sin or telling a transgender person that they uh something's wrong with them mentally and they need to go get some counseling some help uh they would say oh that's not being respectful no it's calling it what it is tell them Call it what it is. Speaking out against a sinful lifestyle is not disrespectful to it. That's like saying to somebody who's sitting on death row for murder, if you call them a murderer, that's not disrespectful. That's what they are. Ephesians 5.11 And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. And that reprove means tell it like it is. You know, don't be afraid to get up and tell somebody sin is sin. They don't want you to do that. So they try to get you to think that that's being disrespectful. Uh, five. Mass incarceration and the death penalty are not pro-life well kind of is kind of is Romans 13 if you take a life we can't just let you go and walk around what kind of nonsense is that if that was the case everybody would just kill whenever they felt like it and y'all know what the Bible says about the human heart is wicked so Romans 13 Paul is talking about government and the Christians responsibility to the government we're gonna read the first four ver four verses let every soul be subject unto the higher powers for there is no power but of God the powers that be are ordained of God whosoever therefore resisteth the power resisteth the ordinance of God and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation for rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain. 
For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. So the Bible is crystal clear that the government has the authority from God and the responsibility to execute, you know, what does it say there? Revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. So the government is well within its right to exercise the death penalty. I don't mean it has to. I understand some people don't. But it's not some kind of immoral thing. God's given the government the authority to do that. Justly, I might add. Justly. Uh, six. The planet and atmosphere are our responsibility to care for. This is probably some Greenpeace, tree-hugging, global warming type nonsense. It is true. The planet is ours. We're supposed to take care of it. We're supposed to manage it. That's what God said. Genesis 126. We're supposed to manage the earth, take care of the earth, but never one time in the Bible does God tell us to save the planet. He does not. Genesis 1, 26-28 And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image and the image of God created he him male and female created he them. And God blessed them and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and every living thing that moveth upon the earth. God gave this planet to us for us to use it. Not to abuse it, but for us to use it. And never one time does it say in the Bible that we're supposed to save it or fix it or anything like that. God made this planet to take care of itself. It can take care of itself. It's like the global warming thing is just a bunch of nonsense that the planet does. It just does that. It just does it. But, you want to talk about global warming. Malachi 4.1 For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. Revelation 21.1 And I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven, and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. This earth's getting destroyed someday. So trying to, you know, save it is it ain't it ain't gonna work out for you. Number seven All faith traditions are equally beautiful and valid. Okay. This one I don't even agree with at all. All faith traditions are not equally beautiful and valid. I don't think Islam is too beautiful at all. The stuff they do and the stuff they teach, not very beautiful, I don't think. And none of them are valid if they don't know, if they're not talking about the God of the Bible and Jesus, then they're not valid. There is not multiple ways to get to heaven. Y'all know what John 14, 6 says, where Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. It doesn't sound like Jesus thinks all of them are valid. 1 Corinthians 8. Five through six. For though there be that are called, for though there be that are called gods, whether in heaven or in earth, 
as there be gods many and lords many, but to us there is but one God, the Father of whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. That is, that is the only valid claim there. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. No Buddha, no Hare Krishna, no Muhammad. They are not all valid. Jesus himself said that. Next, poverty and hunger are unacceptable. Very true. It is unacceptable. Mark 14, 7. Sorry, I don't know that one. Didn't ask you. Mark 14, 7. Sometimes she thinks I'm saying her name and I'm like, I didn't say anything that sounds like your name. I wish we could get rid of all homelessness and hunger and all that. But what did Jesus tell us? 14.7 For ye have the poor with ye always, and whensoever ye will, ye may do them good. But me ye have not always. Now, of course, we do have him always now because uh, he, he can be yours if you're saved. But, he says that we will always have poor people with us. You can go help, and we should, be clear here, as obvious Christians, we should be helping people as much as we can. But let's keep in mind, Jesus said there will always be poor people with you. Why? Because some people just don't want to work. Some people just don't want to work. Some people want to be poor whether consciously or subconsciously you know people all the time complain about this and that well I don't make no money at my job you know people were talking about raising minimum wage why I don't make no money at my job well then work harder and get a better job you gotta if you ain't never going to get nowhere if you're not willing to work hard it's not gonna happen sorry Nobody's handing you anything. God expects a man to work. He does. And if you work at a certain level, and, and it has been decided that this level of work you're willing to do is worth this much money, then that's how much money you're going to make. Now, you do a little bit more work. You get a little bit better at what you do. You get up above that, and it's like, the money goes up because it's like you're on the next level now. Now this level of work is worth this amount. That's how you... People complain all the time and I'm like, I don't understand it. Because I'm my job, I just cut grass. It's not really a great career to get into, I'm going to tell you. But I started off in high school working at the grocery store. Making like, what was I making? Like $6.25 an hour. Then I left that job, got a job that paid a little bit more, left that job, got a job that paid a little bit more, and I just kept on and on to where I'm at now, making tw over twice what I was making when I was in high school working at the grocery store. I don't understand what's so hard about this. But anyway, I kind of got off on a rabbit there. So I agree with that. Poverty and hunger are unacceptable, and I wish we could get rid of them. But we're never going to. And then God is not a white Republican man. Duh. No duh. But let's see what God is. We'll see the three things that God is that these liberals ought to make them shake in their boots. Uh, Hebrews. Hebrews 12.29 for our God is a consuming fire. Exodus thirty four fourteen. For thou shalt worship no other God, for the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. Isaiah 6, 3. Three things that God is that these liberals don't understand. Isaiah 6, 3. 
And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Holy. He's a consuming fire. He's jealous and he's holy. Way above us on the holiness scale. So it would be nice if they would recognize that. Boy, if they did, they wouldn't be liberals no more. So. The idea behind this meme illustrates how clear Satan, how clever Satan is. He takes what looks on the surface, on the surface, oh, it's so compassionate. But when you dig deep down and really understand what they mean, Spurgeon had a quote: uh, "Discernment is not the difference." And it's not knowing the difference between right and wrong. It's in knowing the difference between right and almost right. Almost right. Let's move on to our next story. Well, alrighty. Let's do this segment. This is a full day after I, after I recorded the other parts. But uh, for some reason, my sound, when it got to this segment, just having the worst luck this week when it comes to microphones. But we're going to finish this. And to be honest with you, I'm going to be lazy because I got so much stuff to do. I'm probably just going to record the video on Audacity and post it as the audio without a whole lot of editing. <laughs> So if the, if the audio, if you listen to the audio and it sounds a little bit different this week, that's probably why. Because I am running out of time and I got to do a Sunday school lesson. I got to write my sermon outline. And somehow I got to figure out when I'm going to do schoolwork. But anyway, so we're going to talk about this pastor. I'm going to read you the story uh, on Facebook from christianheadlines.com that you can probably find it in other places I'll try and post the link to the story somewhere I want to say I'll do it in the description but I usually don't ever remember to do that so I'll probably I'll probably post it on Facebook when I post the meme that we went over earlier uh, story says church removes pastor for sign declaring homosexuality a sin and Bruce Jenner a man a Presbyterian pastor who posted a sign calling homosexuality a sin and Bruce Jenner a man has been forced out of his California church I'm sure you are not surprised to hear that, that church is in California Justin Hoke of Trinity Bible Presbyterian Church in Weed, California, said most members of the small congregation had promised to leave if he stayed. It was determined that it would be best be in the best interest of the local body for us, TB, TB, PC, and the Hoke family, to part ways, Hoke wrote on his Facebook page Saturday. I would like to add this. I did not want to leave. I did not quit, and I was willing to stay. Hoke had posted a sign in front of the church that read Bruce Jenner is still a man homosexuality is still sin the culture may change the Bible does not it drew protest outside the church building and sparked coverage in local media too including a story in the San Francisco Chronicle and Sacramento Bee about two dozen people protested outside the church January 6th the church is located about four and a half hours north of San Francisco We've really had to refine our message to be one strictly of love and support for anyone who feels like they are a target of the sign, protester Amelia Mallory told the Chronicle. Debating religion is unproductive, for one, and we also don't want anyone to feel like we are against Christianity as a whole. People are welcome to their own beliefs, but can't be surprised if people take action against such a public display. Well, yeah, if you want to take action, that's your right, but it's also... Other people's right to publicly display their religion. So, there you go. The size message, Hope said, is reflected in Scripture. It absolutely is reflected in Scripture. The ultimate purpose was to say that while the culture may change, the Bible does not. Hope said the culture is now demanding that we call good what the Bible calls evil. 
Sounds like a pastor who knows his Bible. The church, though, either didn't agree with the message or didn't want the attention. If a conservative mountain farming community is no longer a safe place to call sin, sin, then is anywhere in this country still safe for real Christians, Hoke wrote on his Facebook page. Most people on Hoke's page uh, posted words of encouragement. I feel sorry for that church, one person wrote. They chose the world over Jesus. Good job, Pastor Hope. God bless you. The church's Facebook page also was filled with words of support for Hope. I was going to come attend this church this morning, a person wrote. But when I read the pastor was leaving, I decided it was not the kind of church I want to attend. I prefer a Bible-believing church. Amen, amen. Hope said he wanted... So Hoke said he wants to pastor a church again. Many people have reached out asking if they could help him in some physical or monetary way. He wrote on his Facebook page, I'm really thankful for such thoughts and offers, but I don't want to use this five minutes of fame as a chance to capitalize on the sympathy and goodwill of others. The Lord has taken care of my needs. Please pray that God would open more doors for me to preach the gospel. That's all I want or need. So, this... I got two verses we're going to talk. I didn't even write notes for this section uh, because they, they weren't needed. So we're, I'm just going to go. I mean, is Bible truth? What is the problem? Is Bible truth? And these people say, oh, we don't want no Bible truth on our sign. I just don't understand. But, you know what this reminds me of? 2 Timothy 4, verse number 3. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. Verse Jenner being a woman named Caitlyn Jenner is a fable. Is a fable. That is not a real thing. Not a real thing. Uh, but it's not. Is this not a perfect example of a church? I'm wondering how he made it there that far. I don't know how long he was a pastor there, but he seems like he had a good head on his shoulders. So I don't know how how exactly long. Here's the thing. Let me just go ahead and read the Revelation chapter 3 the church of Laodicea because that's what we're living in a Laodicean church age and this is a perfect example of it Revelation three fourteen through 19 and unto the angel of the church of Laodiceans write these things saith, saith the amen the faithful and true witness the beginning of the creation of God I know thy works that thou art neither hot nor cold. I would thou wert hot or cold. So then because thou art lukewarm. And neither cold nor hot. I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest I am rich and increased with goods. And have need of nothing. And knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable. And poor and blind and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire. That thou mayest be rich and white raiment. And thou mayest be clothed. And that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And anoint thine eyes with thy salve, that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him, and will sup with him, and he with me. These churches have got Jesus on the outside knocking on the door. They ain't got no Jesus on the inside, because they don't. Obviously, this one in particular don't want no Jesus on the inside. They're probably wanting to go all liberal. Oh, everybody's okay. Everybody's saved. God loves everybody. Come as you are. Kind of, you know, church like that. But here, here's what struck me when I read this story. Two dozen people came to protest. They're protesting what was on the sign. So that tells me two dozen people who don't know Jesus came 
to their church to protest. I mean, what kind of a a, a witness encounter you got there? Two dozen people that don't know Jesus showed up at your church. And y'all are like, oh, we better get rid of the pastor. We don't like this. Tell them about Jesus. They came to you. You don't even have to go out and get them. But that is the age we live in nowadays where people don't want this book. Listen, I got, I'm not going to find it now, but my list, I got a short little list of uh, topics we're going to go over on the podcast this season. And one of them is about being ashamed of this Bible. In fact, we might do it next week. Who knows? But one of them is about being ashamed of the Bible. People are ashamed of it. They want to sit there and talk about being a Christian and whatnot. But when it comes to the hard truth of the Bible, they want to be ignore it and gloss over it. Where I'm only going to read the the parts that make me feel good kind of people, or they're going to try and interpret them away. I was listening to. Uh, Brother Danny Castle, he's preaching a series this month. Well, I don't know how long it's going to take him. Uh, on the Emergent Church. And uh, if you go, I think they have a YouTube page. Shine a Light Baptist Church up in, uh, where is it? Morganton, North Carolina. Pastor Danny Castle. He's uh, preaching a sermon. The first, the first part he just did. Uh, the method has changed is the title of it. So if you want to go look for it, it was good. It was good stuff, man. And this is a prime example of it right here. Or they, they uh, there was a clip he played of one of the modern contemporary emergent church pastors, and he read he'd read something in the Bible. There he was trying to get rid of the whole exclusivity of Christ thing that Christ ain't the only way. So what? They, he would talk about what well, the Bible says this. Now the way I read that. Nobody asked you the way you read it. You don't get to read it. And then make your own interpretation of it. It says what it says. It means what it means. You don't get to. Oh well you know the way I read it. It says what it says. But they want to change it. They want to change it. And make it more palatable. Listen the gospel to a sinner is not palatable they don't like it i didn't like it i didn't like it at all but once you get saved you like it it's it's like when you're a kid you don't want to take that medicine but you sure did like it when that medicine got to making you feeling better and you weren't sick no more but i just glad i go to a bible believing church and we preach out of the bible now but we don't even have a church sign but if we did don't think we wouldn't put something like that on there. But that is a sign of the times. And it's just going to get worse and worse, y'all. You know it is. So that's all I got for you today. Don't forget if you want a sticker. A Gospel Over Gimmick sticker. And you're listening to the podcast. Because this is just between me and you. It's between me and you. I'm not going to tell nobody else on the Facebook page or Twitter. Or I ain't. Only the people that hear my voice right now listen to this podcast know. You go to the Facebook page, you find this podcast, audio or video, whichever one. Leave a comment, whatever you want to comment. Emoji, sticker, GIF, comment, whatever you want to do. Just leave something on there. You can just, you can just put a period and hit enter. I don't care. And uh, I'll pick a random winner Sunday. Hopefully, if I remember to. Uh... And you'll get a sticker, and I will get it mailed out to you. But shh, it's just between me and, me and you. We ain't telling all the people who don't actually listen to the podcast or watch the video. We ain't telling them. We ain't telling them. But you can find it on facebook.com slash gimmicks. Just head on over there, uh, and you'll be good to go. You'll be entered to win a sticker. Instagram. On Instagram at gospelovergimmicks. And uh, I post uh, things on there that let you know this week's episode we're talking about. Even though I try to, you know, some weeks I might forget, but I try to. And Twitter, at Twitter, wait, at 
GXG underscore ministries on Twitter. And uh, I retweeted Phil Kidd last night. He posted something really good. I'm going to try and do some. I'm trying to be a little more active on Twitter. I told y'all when football season was over, I tried to get a little bit more Twitter, more active on Twitter. Uh, you need to email me. You got a question about something or you got an idea for like, hey, here's a topic you could cover kind of thing. Uh, or you want to know more about how to be saved. Gospelergimmicks at gmail.com is how you would email me. I mean, there's many ways you can get in touch with me. You you can you can message me on a Facebook page. Somebody messaged me on the Facebook page on Christmas Day. How about that? And uh, I was just sitting here playing uh, video games because that's kind of my trip, my Christmas tradition <laughs> since last year, last two years. I gotta wait because I don't have any kids. My sisters have kids and husbands and all that, so it takes them a while to get to Mama's house. So. I just play video games and wait for them. Play uh, Minecraft. That's the tradition now I've started. Where was I going with that? I don't know. But anyway, someone, I was sitting there playing Minecraft on Christmas Day and someone sent me a message on Facebook looking for some videos I did like over a year ago. Like it's probably like two years ago. I'm not sure. But I helped them out with that. So if you need to, you can contact me through Facebook or Gospelergames at gmail.com. Patreon, you want to you want to uh, help financially with the ministry? You, you can do that. You can donate a dollar a month, or you know we got Joanna Garrett, our one patron. She donates ten dollars a month. Whatever you want to do, or you can not donate anything. You're not obligated to. I just want to throw it out there in case you want to help out. I cover all the cost of uh, doing this, and that's cool. I'm fine with it. I'll keep on doing it. But if somebody were to help with the burden, we could probably do a little bit more, do a little bit more stuff. But we can. It's fine either way. So that's Patreon.com/slash/GospelRegiments if you want to go donate. And that's all I got for you this week. Even though it took me two days to record this. I took three days. Did I work on it? No, I don't think I did. But it's done now, and hopefully I'll get these microphone issues worked out by next week. If not, we're going to go back to the way I was doing it. Uh, even though this whole setup right here is a lot easier, but if I can't get this microphone to work right, I guess we'll go back to the way we were doing it. The show must go on. The show must go on. That's all I got for you. Come back and join me next week. We're going to be talking about something good. I don't know what it is, but if it's coming out of the Bible, it's got to be good, right? Till next week, take the cross. Carry on.